All right, welcome back from that report. The federal government has advised manufacturers to continue dialoguing with the Central Bank of Nigeria to resolve the unsettled foreign exchange forward transaction claims. Earlier this year, the CBN governor, Olayemi Kadoso, announced that all valid outstanding FX backlog claims had been settled. However, he noted that about $2.4 billion in FX transactions could not be settled because they were unverified. Now, MAN, that's the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, has raised objections to the Apex Bank's claim of unverified transactions, stating that many manufacturers have been affected by the yet unresolved FX backlog. In response, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Adun, advised MAN and other affected parties to continue dialoguing with the CBN to resolve the matter. I have public affairs analyst now, Mustafa Ewinla, joining me for more conversation on this uh, issue. Thanks for joining me, Mustafa, on Business Insight. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Yes, it is indeed a pleasure. Let's talk about manufacturing now, and let's talk about government policy and um, execution or lack of it. And the manufacturers associations in the news and is saying that it is actually dropping their capacity to about um, 50%. You know, for instance, there have been several policies uh, since uh, the, uh, the outset of this administration with the forex policies, uh, with the inflation, with the Naira float and all of that. And um, the manufacturing industry is one sector that has been completely affected. There's even the issues of um, unresolved um, FX log, um, backlog, uh, to taxation, double taxation, and um, manufacturers are not really getting the right environment um, to, to thrive now. So what are the concerns that uh, uh, I read for you? So clearly, our manufacturing sector is currently uh, facing quite a number of challenges. And uh, that's why we've seen a lot of manufacturers in recent times lamenting on you know, several orders and several challenges they're going through. But again, for me, I think that this, this challenges has affected their growth and also affected their development. And it's very sad because whether we like it or not, the manufacturing industry is a sector that we should not take with levity. Oh. The manufacturing sector, I mean, is kind of the engine room of this country. Oh. And whether we like it or not, we must make that sector very strong and viable. According to Alik Kodangote in one of his recent uh, outings, the success of our local industries or local you know, investments or manufacturers is going to be the overall success in a way to you know, attract foreign investors. So if our local manufacturing industries are not doing well, that is definitely a red flag mm. for foreign investors. And that's why we keep having a lot of you know, in, you know, industry-based manufacturers, you know, lamenting. So what I think, so, so the, our problems is very inherent. And the honest truth is, if you look at our economy or Nigeria as a country, we have quite a number of challenges. Mm. That, you know, that's why even uh, the DG of Manufacturers Association of Nigeria is also complaining. Because for that sector to be performing less than 50% of their mm. installed capacity is definitely not a good pass mark for them. Mm. And that further tells us that something has to be done. So, so yeah, that brings us to one, one of their why I think that the government has to do something. For example, let's even take some of the challenges as a focal point of our discussion today. If you look at our uh, power sector, True. our power sector is a very integral part of any economy that will prosper. And if you look at the power supply deficiency, that's a problem. That's one of the reasons why industries are not doing so well. Manufacturers are performing below expectations. In a country where We've been facing a lot of issues with our energy sector. Imagine if you are running a pure water factory in this country now, and maybe you, you, you've tried to have a gross income of about one million naira monthly. I can tell you that out of that one million naira, you will probably spend about 70 or 60 percent on energy, on power. Mm. So at the end of the day, when these manufacturers you know, produce, it is very difficult for them to even have profit because they are running at a loss. So that's why we've continued to see a lot of company exiting the, co the country. Yeah. Few back, few years back, we used to have a company called Dunlop. So they had to relocate to Ghana because of lack of power in Nigeria. So these are issues. Another very critical issue that we must also, that, that is also one of the key challenges that these manufacturers are going through is instability in Forex. Yeah. A lot of instability in Forex, even if even our you know, CBN rates, our CBN, our CBN uh, bank, 
that keeps you know increasing interest rate every other time. So for because our, our naira has been so devalued, so it's difficult for them to even keep up. So imagine a a, a manufacturer that got a loan from CBN yeah. when dollar was when dollar was say seven hundred naira to, to a naira, and now a dollar now is almost one thousand four hundred or one thousand three hundred. So how is that manufacturer going to break even? Yeah. So definitely, it's going to be running at a loss because. As at the time he, he, the manufacturer got a loan from CBN, dollar was 700 naira now, but now dollar is 1,400, 1,300 in some cases. So those are issues. So, it's, so all this instability in Forex is a huge problem. And another very critical problem is infrastructure deficits. Mm. I'll tell you, so one, one of the key challenges this our manufacturers go through is that the government has not provided, aside from the policy that is, that is shaky, mm. these, are, these are very critical problems that these people go through. Okay. A country where we have infrastructure deficits, we have mm. no roads, we have no potable water. Mm. So a manufacturer will look for money to build a structure for him to mm. run his operations. A manufacturer will build the roads to his own factory. A manufacturer will provide his own transformer to run his own factory. Yes. In a country where you provide your own transformer and PSCN or NEPA or whatever they call themselves, mm. will tell you that after you purchase the transformer, you have to write a letter to transfer the ownership of that transformer to the government before it's being commissioned. So all these are problems. Okay. And I think that they should be addressed. the government of the day needs to address the issue. If, because if care is not taken, mm. we will continue to be import dependent. Mm. And like Dangote has said, that means that we will continue to import poverty because a country that is import dependent it's is important automatically import, importing poverty. But over time, the federal government will come out and say that um, it has um, plans and policies uh, tailored towards uh, boosting the you know, manufacturing sector, and um, over time, it, it has talked about um, its industrial um, development and growth plans uh, several times. But at the end of the day, it's as though uh, they don't carry it to the letter, or they, uh, uh, I don't know the word to use right now, they, uh, they, they seem to not really know the direction to go, because they come up with a policy today, the next day it is being changed, for instance now, uh, we know you talked about the forex policy now and how mm. the naira was floated since last year, and yes. um, over time Nigerians have been bearing the brunt. Even businesses um, have been shutting down. That you have like alluded to. Let's come to our energy sector too. You know, uh, there's been so much um, talk back and forth uh, you know, as regards uh, you know the petroleum downstream sector. Dangote, for instance. Uh, came to do a, a big one, um, a major stake in it. And, and yet, it's as though government's policies um, or lack of it is actually affecting it. It's like the federal government just uh, says something today and the next day it is backtracking or it has, um, we don't have the right economic managers to manage you know, the economy right in the country. So, so, so to the honest truth is, I think we have, all the, we have all the policies in place in this country. We're not carrying it to the letter. But, but, but the honest truth is, a lack of the government's commitment to execute those policies is one of the issues we're having. And, also, and, it, and, I, and I also, also think that some of some, there are some elements in those sectors that are also you know, trying to scuffle a lot of efforts in, those, you mm. know, in, in the process of implementing those policies. So if you ask me, uh, our energy sector, we've seen a lot of issues that has played out in the past few months. And we have constantly continued to say that, no, these issues must stop. All of us would have thought that Dangote came as a messiah, a messiah to reduce mm. the cost of our pump price for fuel. But we have seen that that, that dream is not, going to, is, not coming, is not going to come alive anytime soon. At all. Mm. So let me now tell you, so the biggest problem our manufacturing sector is facing is regulatory orders. Mm. Naturally, naturally, anybody who has invested so much in a business would expect that you get returns, you, you get returns and it will make reasonable profits. Mm. But most of these manufacturing industries are running at a deficit. Mm. So it's difficult to even keep up. That's why to even pay work workers to even keep up with bills overheads, cost of production. So in a country where the cost of production of, of average manufacturer is higher than, always higher than mm. it, you know, the, 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 the sales price. Mm. So, so naturally, if you produce this phone, for a thousand naira, mm. so you are naturally expected to sell for one thousand five hundred or one thousand three hundred or mm. maybe two hundred. Yeah. But in a country where people produce for one thousand one thousand naira and sell for eight hundred naira, mm. that's the end of the business. That's the beginning and the end of those manufacturing. That, and that's what everybody is going through. So they are just trying to get by by the day, and it's and it's difficult. Another 
very key issue is our, our, the nature of our the nature of our manufacturing industry. There's a lot of bureaucracy in that sector. Mm. In a country where, for somebody that wants to become a manufacturer, for you to get NAVDAC registration number, mm. usually they'll tell you that it takes 90 days. It takes so I think for food for food products it takes 90 days. Okay. For drugs for food that has to do with drugs it takes 120 days. But I tell you, in, in real sense, those are good to see on paper. Hmm. But if in, in, in real sense, it takes longer period no, 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 than no, no, no. that. Because you see that a lot of bureaucracy in that sector, even when you have all your documentations correctly, if you don't follow their process within their internal organization, they, if you don't cut corners, you might not even get that approval. Hmm. Because somebody, somebody, somebody somewhere is expecting you to, to lobby them before they do the right thing. So there's hmm. corruption in probably almost all our sectors, and these are the issues. So this is ultimately creating a widespread apathy. People are not even willing to even say they want to come into that sector because before you even start it, you're already dead. Mm. So those are the issues. So I think that the bureaucracy should also stop. Government must create an enabling environment for these manufacturers to, or even prospective manufacturers to come in. If you want to know what even foreign investors go through to start a business in this country, a lot of a lot of irregularities. Mm. These people want to. They have seen some. They have seen. They have identified some opportunities, and in that way, they want to come and bring pro solutions. Mm. But for them to even set up those businesses, they are made. They are made to go through rigorous processes that mm. ends up discouraging them. Do you even want to know that top that four top oil and gas firms in this country now that are even thinking of exiting this this country as we speak? Because of re re all these issues, you know, mm. back and forth and all that, they are, so they are, but they, they, they haven't been able to achieve that goal because of regulatory orders too. But I tell you, Nigeria is supposed to be one of the f friendliest countries to do business because we have the numbers. Nigeria is the biggest Af country in Africa in terms of numbers. Mm. So we're not big. In, so in terms of GDP, we're not big anymore. Mm. I've said it on this platform that a lot of countries has overtaking Nigeria. Look, South Africa has over, overtook Nigeria from the country with the biggest GDP in the world, with over a GDP of over 473 billion US dollars. Nigeria, some years ago, we used to have a GDP of 2000 2022. Our GDP used to be over 400 billion US dollars. Now our GDP is running at almost 253 billion US dollars. So we're mm. declining. So, so that's why I'm saying that anybody that calls Nigeria a giant of Africa, for me, I, I find it very laughable. Very, very laughable. So, so I think we need, we need to take back our glory again. We need mm. to come back to that position. Mm. We have the largest number in terms of people, in terms of resources, in terms of even natural resources. A lot of these countries doing better than us now. Do not even have any. Kenya is a country of about 50 million people. I, I, don't, I, I do not think that Kenya has any natural resources. They don't have crude oil. As much as we do. Mm. They don't have as much as we do, and they are doing better than us. Okay. Kenya is a country that if you, I, I was in Kenya at one point, 24 hours, stable power supply. Mm. And that's why manufacturers keep lamenting that a country that does not have constant 24 hours power supply, mm. a country where people still pay for, pay for power, if only the rich can have 24 hours power, mm. while the poor will, will be in darkness. It's a problem. All right. Power, the power should be equal in different parts of the country, di different parts of the, the country, whether band, band, and, and different, uh, you, regardless of your class. Mm. So you don't have to pay, you should not have to pay any premium to have 24 hours power. Right. So those are the issues. Okay, fine. Another issue um, that uh, manufacturers usually complain about over time is the issue of uh, multiple taxation, specifically for small, yeah. so small, uh, medium scale um, uh, uh, businesses who are into yes. production and the manufacturing. You know, in as much as uh, there, there has been um, a presidential uh, task force, uh, a committee, you know, for fiscal reforms and um, yes. taxation, and they are, they've said as much as possible they are trying to reduce the number of taxes Nigerians pay. But let's really talk about this taxation, because uh, if it's not uh, taxation based on um, what they are importing, excise duty, they are paying yes. other taxes even within the country just to get um, the raw materials you know, into their own firms and their own, uh, you know, companies to do this um, production. So how do we address this issue of uh, multiple taxation in the country? So, right. so, so, but the honest truth is it is very normal as a business owner or even individual to pay tax. Yes. Because that's the multiple because, taxation. Yes. So, yeah. so, so that's, so yeah, I get your point. So that, mm. but that's the money the government uses to mm -hmm. build develop the country. Yes. To develop the country. But in a country where people are tax in multiple cases and the, I will not even see the, I will not even see the results of the infrastructure. Mm. I was listening to a video of Ali Kodangote just a few minutes ago and he was saying that the tax he paid last year as a, as the company, Dangote Refinery, the tax he paid 
is big is, is more than the tax the own commercial banks in Nigeria paid for the whole of last year. So that's to tell you if Dangote Refinery or Dangote Group of Company mm. as a company is paying tax that is even more than all the banks in Nigeria combined together in a year. Mm. That tells you that the manufacturers are actually the engine room of this country. True. And that tells you that the government only just needs to give them some support and a enabling environment to make mm. them, you know, we can have more we can have more aliko dangotes in the industry, in the, mm. you know, building refineries. We can have more aliko dangote, you know, you know, producing rice, producing cement. Dangote cement is exported as much as almost all the parts of African countries mm -hmm. for, for production and for use. And those are the kind of energy we should be getting. But in a country where they, they pay huge tax and they don't see the results, it's the problem. And multiple transaction will drastically kill these businesses. It mm. will kill them. And so I think that the government also needs to, you know, do something in that in that area too. These these manufacturers are just struggling. They are just trying to get by by hook or by crook. Isn't it? Because mm. but, but the honest truth is, they just need something an environment that will give them something very simple to work with. All right. And the government needs to do something better on okay. that. Okay. So your last words on this as we round off from um, the show. So so my last words will be to the government because whether we like it or not, everything we do as a country, uh, we, it, it rises and falls on the government. So I think the government needs to just give manufacturers and an mm. enabling environment to okay. work. Yeah. We, we must grow Nigeria. Again, and a country that depends so much on importation will not grow. We, need, we must have a country where we start to produce all our own goods, even to the smallest toothpick. We must start to produce it. That's how we can move okay. forward as a country. All right. Uh, the federal government needs to do so much yes. more to um, you know, enhance our production and manufacturing. That's the only way we can grow our economy and, of course, uh, not be so dependent on foreign um, made product. I want to say a very big thank you to you, Mustafa Iwinla, for, for your time on the show this morning. Thank I do for. appreciate it. All right, so Mustafa Iwinla is a public affairs analyst and he joined me to look at um, the issues in the manufacturing sector and what the government needs to do to ensure an um, enabling uh, playing ground so that manufacturers can actually indeed um, thrive. That's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there. <laughs>